Hello and uh, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to look at platform as a service variant of cloud computing platforms, that is PaaS platforms. PaaS is a short form for platform as a service. If you recall, in one of our previous lectures, we looked at infrastructure as a service variant of cloud computing platforms. One of the major uh, goal of infrastructure as a service platform is to address the issues that we face while working with the regular physical computing environments. For example, infrastructure as a service allows you to procure the computing resources in a very quick fashion and in a self-service uh, fashion. Even though infrastructure as a service platform provides a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, very low level control on the infrastructure that you obtain, but still maintaining the operating system and other software and configuration is the responsibility of the cloud consumer in such cases. In several scenarios, this may be undesirable. For example, if you are a small to medium enterprise or an individual developer who is trying to uh, prototype some business idea, you may not want to set up the underlying infrastructure and maintain it yourself because you may not have the resources and energy and uh, 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 the, the money to, to spend on such tasks. Whereas you want to be able to quickly prototype your idea, let's say. So it will be nice if somebody else manages all the underlying infrastructure for you and you can focus mainly on your own task of developing and designing the application. So this is the area which is targeted by past platforms. And in this lecture, we are going to look at uh, several aspects of it in the subsequent files. Okay, so let's look at some of the details about platform as a service. Basic idea here is that the platform as a service cloud variant is intended to help the developers so that they can focus on developing and designing their applications. And they are not supposed to be burdened by the overheads of managing underlying runtime, middleware and operating system, etc. So NIST has given some definition about platform as a service, which says that as a consumer of platform as a service, you're, you're mainly concerned about building your application by using the programming languages, libraries, etc. that are supported by the PaaS cloud provider. And you deploy those applications on the infrastructure that is managed and provided by the PaaS cloud provider. Typically, a vendor of a PaaS cloud will provide a sandboxed environment to the developers where they can deploy and develop their applications. Sandbox means that each, uh, each particular developer will have their applications isolated from one another and they are not expected to be much of an interference or any other issues arising due to the co-location of multiple applications. Multiple consumers therefore share the common platforms on which they deploy their uh, applications. Now let's look at uh, some more characteristics. So clearly you can develop the applications by using only the libraries, programming languages, etc. that are supported by a given PaaS platform. This means that you cannot use any arbitrary libraries or uh, APIs which are not supported by your PaaS provider. So one example of a PaaS platform is Google App Engine and if you look at their documentation and their detail. Google App Engine provides uh, Java and Python as the primary uh, programming environments to develop the applications which, which can be uh, deployed on Google App Engine PaaS platform. In order to ensure certain SLAs and certain features uh, such as isolation and security and others, Google App Engine does not support the entire JDK's uh, APIs JDK is Java Development, uh, Java SDK, Java Software Development Kit. So not all the APIs are supported by Google App Engine. So you may find certain areas where they have uh, modified certain implementations of uh, internal Java classes. So it may happen that if you developed some piece of software using Java programming language and it worked on a standard JRE, it might not work on a Google App Engine PaaS platform. So in that sense, uh, you may have some kind of issues arising due to such cases. Also, you may not have much control on the underlying 
computing infrastructure. For example, a pass platform typically does not offer visibility into the network configuration of the underlying uh, infrastructure. If your uh, application logic is such that it depends on your ability to query the IP address of the physical host on which it is running, then you may be out of luck in case of a pass platform. Similarly, you may not be able to query in your application that how many cores the physical CPU of underlying infrastructure has. So in such scenarios, if you have some dependency on your ability to determine these pieces of information for about underlying infrastructure, you may not be able to do so. As an application developer, you can only configure the hosting environment settings and need not have the ability you may not have the ability to configure the underlying hardware, for example. You may not be able to, let's say, change the power modes of the underlying machine. So obviously, there is less effort required in the case of PaaS when you have to set up and deploy your application. Uh, comparing it with the infrastructure as a service, certainly this is a lower effort because you're not required to set up the operating system and keep it updated and so on. That whole effort is taken care by the cloud provider as we saw in the previous slide. So just to highlight this whole thing is managed by the vendor for you. You are not responsible for making sure that this underlying infrastructure scales and is secure and so on. These things are provided to you as a service. Okay, but this obviously comes as a the cost of flexibility. In certain cases, you may certainly need more flexibility to have greater control on the underlying uh, infrastructure. For those kind of scenarios, it's better to go for infrastructure as a service. Let's look at the architecture of a platform as a service cloud. So we have three parts of this diagram. You have the user's perspective, you have the developer's perspective, and then you have the perspective from the cloud provider. So as a user, you will typically access the applications that are deployed on a PaaS platform by using some sort of a browser or if the functionality is offered as a web service in certain cases, then you may have access to those services by using appropriate APIs, etc. But typically it is uh, some sort of a web application that you will be deploying. Uh, so this is the current uh, state in the industry where most uh, platform as a service offerings, they allow people to develop web applications which can be deployed on their infrastructure. Examples are Google App Engine, uh, even Cloud Foundry is there from VMware and so on. On the developer's side, you use the platform as a service cloud provider's tools to build and deploy your application into the vendor's infrastructure, which is shown here. Now let's look at the vendor side of the things. Vendor has a scalable in environment on which it has set up different services which your applications can use to perform its business functions. For example, you may have a data store services which allow your applications to persist some information that your application functionality requires. And you may also have identity services. Identity services means which can be used by applications to authenticate and authorize the users of your applications. And similarly, you may have several other services such as uh, messaging, etc. So these are the services which are implemented as separate components and are available to the pass applications. And then it may also offer certain application runtimes which may support uh, different programming languages. This runtime is where your application is actually deployed. And when you code your application, you use a particular supported uh, programming language and it supported set of APIs. And using that particular language, you will be making use of the services that are offered here in the lower layer here. Vendor takes care of scaling the uh, services so that multiple users application can perform as per the desired SLAs so that they are able to support large user requests. So scaling of this uh, application is responsibility of the PaaS cloud provider. For example, if your application is experiencing large amount of user requests, the underlying infrastructure automatically will create more instances or provide more resources to the necessary components. Let's say your application was using some data, uh, data store to persist some of its information and as the load increases, the PaaS platform may provide more uh, server instances which are hosting this very component that is persisting your data. So if you are a PaaS platform provider, you may have to worry about all these concerns 
that is if you are trying to set up a business which is offering a platform as a service cloud services then you need to be aware of all these concerns that is how do you scale your services which you provide in your platform as a service cloud and how do you make sure that still different users applications are provided appropriate level of isolation and so on so these will be typically the concerns of somebody who is looking to provide platform as a service cloud but from the developer standpoint all you worry about is your own functionality that your application is intended to provide and not worry much about the underlying uh, infrastructure in the next lecture we are going to look at an example pass platform a leading example in the industry today is google app engine so we will look at uh, some of the services that google app engine offers and a uh, little bit about its internal architecture We'll go over those details in the next lecture. Thank you.